We're ready now to really start pushing our promo for our lead magnet and jumpstart our list building. And we're gonna start with about three to five social media sites. The sites you choose to focus on are certainly up to you, but in this lesson, I'll go through some of the most important ones and you can choose if you're going to use all of them or maybe just some. And at this stage, I'm gonna recommend a helpful service called Buffer. Buffer helps you manage several social sites, schedule posts, track the performance all at once and all kind of pre-scheduled. So it's a really good option for you. Since we're gonna be doing a lot of social media promotion across several sites throughout this program, I do recommend checking it out and uh, probably using it as well to help schedule and keep up with some of these. So let's start with Facebook. In general, the image size for, size for Facebook, that's universally kind of the best option for an image to uh, post with your share is about 1200 by 628 pixels. But it also can depend on orientation, if it's gonna be a horizontal, vertical, or square photo. And so definitely, uh, you know, that's the recommended kind of universal size, but you may have to play around with it a bit. And the next best practice is to include a link to your site, of course. You can use a service like Bitly, for example, so you can track it. Uh, and whenever you've read your post and go through, you know, what it is you're gonna say on Facebook, it should be, you know, about less than 100 characters, not too long. Your goal is just for the post to get people to click through your site and download your lead magnet. And after your first post about your lead magnet, you wanna write four more follow-up posts that play off the theme of, of your lead magnet. And so while you do want to make reference to your lead magnet, you don't want to just be reposting the same update over and over. You don't want to sound just like a robot. So give yourself a few minutes to write each variation of your upcoming posts. And it's only like 100 characters. It's not too, too much you know, work to write. Now, you can also use Facebook's time setting to schedule posts, but a free Buffer account, again, uh, would probably be a better option in the long run because with Buffer, you'll be able to schedule your posts, tweets, and updates for all of your social media accounts. So it's going to save a lot of time if you, for example, you know, dedicate your work today to getting it set up across all of these sites. And so now that we've got Facebook kind of set up, we know the image size, about how long uh, your you know, post about your lead magnet should be, how many to create. Let's start thinking about Twitter and what we're going to tweet. Again, also you can do this from your Buffer account as well to set up five to seven tweets. But again, you want to vary the message again. And so don't just keep retweeting the same message over and over again, just like in your Facebook posts. You want to make sure you vary the message. And given how short the ideal Facebook post is, you know, about 100 characters, if you're really, you know, stuck with time, you could possibly reuse some of those Facebook posts as tweets because they fit, you know, the 140 character limit for Twitter as well. So you just want to make sure that you add in a couple of hashtags and uh, maybe a quick call to action that will be within your 140 characters. And then when you should actually tweet them out, maybe think about like every other day. You could try to do that. And also intersperse your tweets, promoting your content with a few tweets, promoting other people's content, you know, retweeting, things like that. Aim for like an 80-20 ratio of other people's content to your content. So you're not over promoting yourself here. And so here's Google Plus, and here's a little thumbnail guide to posting on Google Plus. Use images that are between about 800 to 600 pixels. Use one to two hashtags. Uh, you'll tag brands and people in your post where it's appropriate. You can interact with the hot topics section to get more exposure, and also join some communities on uh, Google Plus to help you find more likely subscribers, you know, an audience that's more, you know, probably in tune with the things that you're talking about. For LinkedIn, Again, you want to use Bitly or another link shortener that you can also track as well to kind of see how much traffic they're going to be getting. Post your update in your LinkedIn status update and also in two to three relevant groups, but don't post more than like once a day maximum. Uh, and in LinkedIn, you don't want to update your status or, you know, in groups too much because, you know, you want to be having a different strategy for each of the social media profiles and accounts. So on Twitter, you know, people are active on Twitter all day. You know, you see people tweeting out different things all throughout the day. On Facebook, you maybe see people a little less active, maybe once a day or so. And then on LinkedIn, it's, it's really honestly even less. It has to be really specific, actionable, a real reason for you to be posting on LinkedIn. And so you want to make sure that you kind of hone your strategy and for the communication with your audience on each of the sites. On Pinterest, if this is something that would, you know, work well for, for your brand, you could create a board with an intriguing but accurate title and actually pin the lead magnet uh, post to that board. And also some kind of tips that have been found about uh, using Pinterest is don't pin images of people. It's been shown that images without faces get 23% more repins. 
you know, for whatever reason that is. And also tall images work best. So you could aim for a, you know, two by three aspect ratio there. And also pin light colored images. It, they've been shown to get repinned 20 more times often than dark images. So we're using some psychology here to try and uh, get us some more repins. But however, in this case, don't use a link shortener like Bitly. Pinterest actually kind of views these as spammy, so you would just want to use your direct link. And keep your pin description between 100 and 200 characters if you're going to be using Pinterest. Instagram, Instagram, you know, we know is very important these days. So you definitely want to make sure that you use hashtags in your updates. They're a major part of Instagram. It's a big way how users can find you through their mobile searches. So unlike on other sites like Twitter, you're not limited by the character count. So you want to include a few tags, but not too many, or you'll look kind of desperate if you have, you know, 50 hashtags after your post, just some specific ones to get you connected you can include some general tags on your post so you could be found for your products or your lifestyle posts. Like if your business is, for example, you know, a coffee shop or a candy shop, you could post an image, you know, of one of your products like a candy bar and include tags like, you know, hashtag chocolate, for example, or hashtag candy. And also because it's Instagram, use filters to enhance your photos. You can use you know, cool angles, any kind of photography trick uh, that you want to try out. Instagram, you know, is, is the place to be able to try to do this as well. And if you want to start getting some engagement with Instagram, um, with your posts there, you can pose questions, you know, like, uh, you know, what's your favorite, you know, time of the day to, you know, eat chocolate or candy bar or something just to, you know, get people actually engaged in writing back to you in the comments. And you could post maybe two to three times a day, but honestly, or two to three times a week. You need to monitor your account and the engagement you're getting with your posts to determine the post frequency. It is gonna be different for different brands as well. And so that, those are the most important sites and kind of the you know quick at a glance things to know whenever you're posting there. And so hopefully you'll spend the remainder of this time today actually posting your lead magnet posts uh, on Facebook, you know, on Twitter, any of the other uh, social sites that are important to you. And so definitely go through Buffer and make sure you're getting things set up and scheduled so you can actually just know, like, let's say for the next week or two, that your social promo uh, updates for your lead magnet are going to be going on autopilot and you just can kind of monitor them, stay engaged. So if you're not able to get all of the social media posts scheduled like within the next hour or so, you can actually think about if you do need to be on all of these social sites that you're trying for, if, or if really your audience is mainly just on Facebook or Twitter or maybe Instagram or maybe Pinterest. Uh, so you don't have to be on every single social website out there. So in the next tutorial, we're gonna go and see who is in your industry by doing some research and be able to actually start following some influential sites and influencers. So that's gonna be very important for us. And then don't forget our PDF download for this lesson, which is a handy image sizing guide for all of the different social uh, websites out there. So that should be handy as well. So see you in the next lesson.